Alright, so we are back again with some more Sniper Elite 3 it's gameplay for you guys to today. And uh, to be quiet honest, I've already played this mission so many times before. But I've been getting calls all day, so um, I've been interrupted pretty much every time I record. So um, I'm going to change it up this episode a bit. I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of introduce myself and give you guys a little bit more to work on with uh, who I am and all of that jazz so uh, yeah I think it's just gonna be good to kind of um, give you guys a little bit of insight about who you're actually watching so yeah I think this is gonna be pretty good um, most of you guys probably won't be interested at all but um, tough luck I guess you guys are gonna have to kinda hear me out um, so I'm going to start off with uh, with my name, obviously. So, my name is Marcus, um, or Red, you guys can call me whatever. I kind of chose the name Red because, um, firstly, Pokemon Trainer Red is such a badass. Um, the second re reason is uh, that 70 show, Red Foreman, he is an absolute legend. Dumbass. Oh, not shot. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of why I chose Red. Also because uh, my mate, his YouTube channel is Black Forest and goes by the name Black. So it kind of all fit in. So if we do Let's Plays, it would be Red and Black. So that might be a bit lame, but to me it sounds pretty good. So we'll just go with that. Um, currently living in Melbourne, Australia, and Australia isn't that bad. I'm flattered that the rest of the world thinks we're, we're a bunch of, like, hard-skinned, uh, beer-drinking, carefree, kangaroo-riding, um, snake-wrestling, alligator-hunting bunch of, like, British criminals, I guess. Criminal rejects. Um, See what I mean? I've been getting messages all day. Um, I guess we're... Uh, that is quite flattering, but... We're, we're just as, as normal as the rest of you guys, I guess. Um, but drop, drop ears are pretty bad. Drop ears are pretty bad, so you guys got to be careful. Um, I don't know. I think... I think we're pretty normal. Not that bad. Um, I haven't lived in Melbourne my whole life. I have, I've been kind of drifting around, I guess. My parents like to move. Um, we moved a lot. I moved a lot as a kid. So I've been back and forth between uh, New Zealand and Australia. I'm originally from New Zealand, born and bred. So shout out to South Auckland if any of you guys are watching. Um, but I don't have the accent, so I've lost the accent. So I might not be a true Kiwi, but I am Kiwi at heart. Love all the Kiwi stuff. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been living in Melbourne for a while now, and I've adjusted, and obviously my accent's gone. That's mostly because of high school. Um, I completed high school here, so um, I did get a lot of people coming up to me and asking me to pronounce stuff differently um, and that did get annoying and because I lived here before picking up the accent wasn't that hard and it kind of just happened which uh, I'm pretty gutted about because Kiwi accent is pretty cool um, if you guys don't know what a Kiwi accent sounds like um, if you guys have heard of Flight of the Concords Jermaine is pretty much a Kiwi accent, he pretty much has a Kiwi accent, so yeah, they usually pronounce their sixes like sucks or sucks and fish and chips. I don't know, I suck. <laughs> I suck at my own my own freaking um accent that sucks. Oh my god. Um but yeah. Um So yeah, I've been between Australia and New Zealand quite a bit. Um I call both of them home. Because they've, they've both been really good to me. I've really enjoyed living in both countries. 
And they're pretty much the same country, just separated by sea. Um, Alright, what else? Um, 22? Or 23? Um, 22? I'm not quite sure, actually. I haven't celebrated a birthday since I was 10, so I'm about... I'm pretty you know, lost when it comes to my age. I'm not exactly keeping track. Uh, let's go with 22. Yeah, I'm, I'm 22, I think. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with 22. So I'm 22. <laughs> um, still trying to figure out what to do with my life, or currently figuring it out. Um, it's completely fine. If any of you guys out there are in the same situation, if any of you guys are pretty much lost about what you want to do in life, it's perfectly fine. Um, don't get too down about it, because you'll eventually find your calling, I guess you can say. Um, I mean, I've been I've been flip-flopping around, um, trying to figure out what to do and what I want to do with my life and which career I want to, you know get into and all that. Place a trap here to cover my back. Um, quick rundown of what I've actually done. Um, I have, as soon as I finished high school, I jumped straight into a course in psychology. Um, it was kind of one of those rush, rushed moments about, with all the pressure from my, my parents and teachers and my, my friends as well, because they were, they were getting into courses and they seemed like they well, know, so they knew what they wanted to become, file. which is, uh, what it seemed like at the time, but to be honest, nobody really knew. Um, so psychology, as soon as I came out of high school, um, did that for about a year and a half. Um, because of some of, some dramas that happened while I was studying that course, I actually ended up leaving, dropped out, and I uh, re-enrolled in psychology and human resource management, which is pretty bad move on my half, I guess. It's pretty much still doing the course I didn't like, adding on top of it another course that I didn't like. Um, but I was kind of in, in it for the money. I was kind of researching um, what jobs I wouldn't mind doing um, and that I'd be good at. So business, I was I'd be pretty good at business and psychology, obviously, so... But... I didn't enjoy it, so... I ended up leaving that as well. Um... I'm currently... going to be studying uh, computer science, which is pretty awesome. I've got some really good advice from a, a friend of mine, which I met uh, in my last job. And the advice, I'm pretty much going to forward this advice to you, and I, I hope you guys um, take something away from it, I guess. Um, his advice was, whatever you do when you procrastinate is what you should be trying to um, make into a career, pretty much. So, all those times when you, you want to be doing, when you have to be doing homework, and you actually, you know, you're doing something on the side, something productive. Okay, make sure it's productive. Um, yeah, you, so you, you're supposed to be doing your homework, it's due tomorrow, but you know, screw that, I'm having fun doing whatever I'm doing now. So, try and make that your career, but make sure it's realistic. So in my case, um, if you guys have played Rust before, I guess, I used to write a lot of, uh, I used to make a lot of mods for Rust, so with the Magma, if you guys have played Rust before, on the servers you'd get like special mods, teleportation mods, and all that. Um, I wrote a few of them. I wrote the auto kick mod for chat, so in text chat. It's pretty much an in text chat filter. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It was an in text chat filter, so if, if someone was to say something racist or so let's say say Justin Bieber. If if you said Justin Bieber in chat, you'd be kicked and banned from the server. So that's pretty cool. And um, I also did some arena mods, so uh, mods to teleport you to and from the arena, which is pretty cool. Um, 
It was nothing too serious. It was mostly JavaScript kitty stuff. But I, I did enjoy it, so... <clears throat> taking my friend's advice, I uh, decided to enroll for computer science. So that's my education history, I guess you can you can say. Come on, let's get this guy. Come on. So, um, yeah, education-wise, I'm pretty much set. Um, hopefully this course goes well, and hopefully I enjoy it enough to actually stick to it this time and, and actually finish it. Um, yeah, it should be interesting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I start in about three weeks, if I haven't already said. Um, what else can I tell you guys? Hobbies. I'm really into music, and when I mean music, I don't mean just listening to it. Um, I absolutely love playing music and creating music, composing music, and all that. Um, I grew up in a very creative family, so my dad's a musician, my mom's a musician, my grandpa's a uh, musician. Well, both my granddad. So my mom's side and my dad's side, they're both musicians. One plays guitar, one plays piano, um, aunties, they draw and they paint, um, my cousins, they're all into music as well. It would be worth placing so, um, traps, just in case. Yeah, it was, it was really nice growing up in a creative um, environment. It was really good for, now that I look back, it's, it's, it was a lot of fun and it taught me a lot of things actually. Um, in New Zealand, they're a bit more concentrated on, on uh, I guess, musical groups and uh, sporting groups and multicultural groups and all that stuff. And I think they've actually um, hit the nail on the head, I suppose you can say, because what they found out was if you if you can commit to extracurricular activities, stuff like music and all that, then you should be able to commit you should be able to learn how to commit into your studies so that's a really good thing that uh, New Zealand high schools do very well and I think other schools should uh, kind of um, I don't know kind of take take on that like same mindset um, so in New Zealand, I joined pretty much every band I could join. I joined the orchestra, I joined the jazz band, strings, the brass, brass ensemble. Um, I had my own band running for a while, a few bands actually. Um, posed a few songs, wrote a few songs for a few groups and all that. Um, I did one song for a game, which was pretty awesome. Um, that was like this 8-bit, really like, upbeat type of song. I don't know if I still have it, I should try to look for it. Um, but yeah, I was pretty much into my music. Um, I can play pretty much anything with strings, which is pretty, pretty damn good. It's, it's a nice skill to have, I guess. Um, I'm not even, even going to bother explaining how much things I can play. Not to toot my own horn, but um, I've actually forgotten how much things I can play, so yeah. Um, sports, I love sports. I used to play rugby religiously. I was a wing. Good old wing, fast on my legs. Um, also, I used to play NFL. It's a gridiron for you American, uh, American viewers. Um, I was, I was pretty much anything that that required speed. So running back and um, wide receiver, pretty much were my go-to roles, which is uh, it's good fun, very good fun. It's it's a shame that um, Melbourne doesn't have that many teams. I've I've looked, those trucks will but I've actually uh, considered taking up ice hockey. 
So, we'll see about that. Um, it looks like a lot of fun. Um, but we'll see how we go with that. So, I'll keep you guys updated. If I do join ice hockey, um, I'll, I'll let you guys know. Um, is there anything else I can talk about? Besides the music, um, I, I got a music scholarship. That's a fun fact. Um, I got the scholarship in my second year of high school, and um, when I was <laughs> when I was performing, I had to perform a bass solo. Not a bass solo, but. Um, it was my choice. I wanted. I was accompanying a a piano, and I was playing the bass line. It was a very complicated bass line. Um, at least for my age, it was. Um, and when I got up onto the stage to start performing, for the I guess panel, they were kind of trying to see if I was worth um, supporting. So I got up on stage. Um, and I was using the school's amp. So the school that that was hosting the thing, I was using their amp. My bass guitar, their amp. Um, plugged in, started playing. Halfway through, the uh, amp blows for some unknown reason. And uh, it was very embarrassing and I was absolutely shattered. Um, and I pretty much took it like a champ. I grabbed <laughs> I grabbed the amp and I threw it towards the panel. No, I grabbed the amp and I uh, took it off stage, grabbed my amp, luckily out of the car, and uh, placed it up on the stage and used that. And uh, I think two, two or three people from my school got that that scholarship, which is pretty awesome. Um, but unfortunately, I had to leave. I had to leave the country. <laughs> that sounded way more criminal than it should have. I had to leave the country because my sister was born. And uh, when my sister was born, uh, my parents wanted somewhere where there were more opportunities. So we came back to Australia, which is pretty awesome. Um, when I got back here, it was quite a culture shock because Kiwis, they're all like Polynesian but so they're all very chilled people and um yeah when I got here there was a group of Polynesians but they weren't chilled they were pretty much um pretty much troublemakers but um angel faced troublemakers they they seem so like angelic and innocent but in, but in like reality, they were they were troublemakers, and um, I think it's because of the age I came here. I was about 15, turning 16. No, I was 15 actually. Um, I think everyone was just hormonal at that stage, so everybody was pretty much a troublemaker. Um, but yeah, so I've been enjoying Australia so far. Been living here since 2006. And I've, I've grown accustomed to it. Yeah, the weather here is absolutely terrible. It, it goes from cold to hot to cold to like hailing. It's it's weird. You never know what to wear. You have to double up and kind of wear like thongs with shorts and and like a woolly jumper and a jacket with an umbrella and a sunglasses and sunscreen just to make it through the day without getting hit by the elements. One cool thing that I did do in New Zealand though is uh, I played for the mayor of Auckland, which is pretty awesome. And we also opened up, I uh, can't remember if it was like a butterfly sanctuary kind of thing. And uh, I know you guys think butterflies are pretty cute, but have a whole lot of them in a room and they're pretty freaky. Like, I'm not talking these pretty as like butterflies that you see out in the garden and all that. Like there were some like pretty ones. I'm not gonna i I'm not gonna lie, but 
when you get surrounded by like all these different colors and then you see this one that looks like bunched up wet toilet paper with wings um, that's when that's when you start to panic especially at 13 or 14 um, yeah so I've, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed everything so far um, now why did I start YouTube? Well, I pretty much started YouTube to kind of share my gameplays. I thought I've had so many moments where I've been like, I wish someone saw saw me do this, you know, like epic thing, and uh, there was unfortunately no way to actually show it. And so I thought, I might as well just make a YouTube channel, record my gameplays, and that way everybody can see what I'm doing. Um, I also did it to support my friend Black. Um, he he's currently uh, playing Wolfenstein and Outlast. You should go. You guys should check out his channel. He's pretty good, and he's uploading like crazy at the moment. He's doing like three videos a day, which is a fair effort compare, uh, considering our upload speeds are like 0 0.75 megabits per second, which is which is absolutely shocking. It takes about, uh, let's see, that's about three, four hours to upload, close to one gig, which sucks balls, but we have to make do. So, um, yeah, be sure to check him out. It's pretty awesome. Tell him hey from me, I guess. You guys can be my little messengers. Now I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Don't hate me, please. Um, yeah, so I'm not too fussed about likes and comments and all that, but it does help out, and it is really nice to get comments from people, just because I enjoy discussing um, different viewpoints. So if I might have a different viewpoint to to, to Sniper Elite compared to you. Um, sounds like there's someone playing trumpet next door. Um, yeah, so I might have a different viewpoint than, than you do and I'd love to discuss that so you guys can hit me up on Twitter or leave a comment whatever you guys want um, but if you guys don't feel like it I'm not too fast as long as you guys enjoy the video then uh, I'm pretty much set for that um, I'm not really expecting this channel to go anywhere I just really want to have a place to upload my videos and get some input and get some discussions out of it I guess. I already have a nice little community here. 10, 10 subscribers is pretty good. Like, and it's not even 10 subscribers that don't talk to me. It's 10 subscribers that like comment on pretty much oh, nearly every video. Every second video I guess. And uh, if you guys are watching this, my 10 subscribers, um, I really appreciate you guys watching and taking the time out of your day to kind of share this experience with me, which is pretty awesome. And I think that's something that the internet is really good for, sharing experiences and discussing. Looks like the Germans are shifting explosives in those crates. Alright, so what's happening? We have to let's hope this There we go. Come on. Boom. Nice. Yeah. Not too sure if I covered everything I wanted to speak about. It wasn't really a plan, but um, I hope that was like sufficient enough and entertaining enough for you guys to watch. If you guys actually made it this far, then I'm impressed. I'm really impressed. But um, I picked through the wreckage to search the corpse. My reward. Two words. Project Sega. But, uh, yeah. I guess I just want to say thanks for watching, guys. And, uh, if you guys like the video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want. Leave a comment if you want. And I will see you guys in the next video. Alright. See you guys.